Here's a quick review how to find slope. So I have a little foldable for you, and just so you know how it goes, you fold, you fold the paper in half, okay? And then that part that says remove this flap, you actually cut that off. See, I don't have that flap on this side. You cut it off, and then you have like a little, a little opening for each of them. All right, so I'm gonna go through this digitally so that you can actually read it, because you know I'm left-handed and you will not be able to see it if I try to just write on a piece of paper with my camera above it. So let's take a look at this. Finding slope, it's a really quick review because this is hopefully something that you've been doing for a long time. There's three different times that we're gonna be finding slope. Sometimes we're gonna find it from a graph, sometimes from an equation, and sometimes from a table. So first when I have a graph, slope really is just the change in y divided by the change in x. Now what I want you to think about is this means this is the rate of change, right? So I say how much did the y change in relation to how much the x changed, okay? It's a rate. So I think of things like feet per second. So the slope of a line really tells you how many feet per second something is going, or how many miles per hour something is going, or anything like that, okay? So change in y over change in x, which is also, if you remember, rise over run. So when you have a graph, you can literally just count the slope. Because it's a line, you can pick any two points because it has a constant slope. So let's pick this point here, and let's pick that point there. It honestly doesn't matter which one we pick, and then we, Check the rise, one, two, three, and the run is one. So our slope is three over one. And now here's where people forget. Um, I just did it and didn't think to say it. I went up three, so that's a positive three, and then I went right one, which is also in the positive direction, correct? So it's a positive one. So my slope for here is positive three. And remember, M is the number, or the letter we use to represent slope. Now what about this one? Let's pick any two points. We can pick this point and this point, and then we're gonna look at the rise. I went down two, and then I went right two. So, you heard me say I went down two. Well, down is the negative direction, and then I went right two, and right is the positive direction, so this is a positive one. So my slope on this one is negative two. All right, how do I find a slope when I just have an equation? Well, if it's in slope-intercept form, it's actually really easy. And after this, you'll learn about point-slope form. It's also very easy. But if you have it in slope-intercept form, where y equals and then some stuff on the other side, you're going to find your slope by looking for m, just the number in front of x. That's it. If it's not all by itself, you just have to get it by itself. So what's the slope here? What's in front of m? What's in front of x? This negative... And you're like, well, slope can't just be like a negative sign, right? Well, what is that? What does that actually mean? Remember, that's an invisible negative 1. There's an invisible negative 1 there. And so, really, our slope is negative 1 because that's the number that's in front of x. But at this one, you might be like, oh, the number in front of x is, is 5, therefore the slope is 5. No, 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 no. You need to get y by itself, okay? So let's get y by itself. So we're going to subtract 5x from both sides. And we get negative 2y equals negative 5x plus 30. And we're going to divide by negative 2. And we get y equals, now negative 5 divided by negative 2 is 5 halves, just positive 5 halves, minus 15. So now our equation is in slope-intercept form. And now that it's in slope-intercept form, we can find the slope because that's the number that's right in front of x. So our slope here equals 5 halves. So y has to be by itself for you to be able to use that to look just in front of x, right? It has to be in slope-intercept form. Last but not least, sometimes we have a table. You're going to use arrows. The slope still is the change in y over the change in x, which is rise over run. We're going to use arrows to figure out how much this is changing each time, right? How much is x changing and how much is y changing? Since this is a line, the, change, the rate of change should be constant. So, from negative 3 to 3, how much did we change? Well, oh, sorry, this should be actually a 0. That's a typo. Okay, so from 0 to 3, we changed 3. From 3 to 6, we changed 3. And from 6 to 9, we changed 3. Okay, 
And from our y, we changed 1, our y, we changed 1, and 1. Okay, so how much is the change in y is 1, and the change in x is 3, so our slope is 1 third. And let's take a look at this one from 12 to 8. We went down 4. And again, since this is a line, the slope should be constant. The rate of change should be constant. Then we went up 4 here. We added 4. So the change in y is 4, and the change in x is negative 4. So our actual slope is negative 1. And you're done. Now you can find slope.